Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Painting, Library Edition. I'm your host, Kimberly Cassio, and I'm with the Calcasieu Parish Public Library. And today we'll be doing a Bob Ross inspired winter landscape scene with an extra added twist in the middle. So stick around to find out what our painting is going to look like. If you'd like to join and paint along, please do. Here's what we're going to be painting with today. Black, white, cobalt blue, pewter gray, cherry red, bright yellow, metallic rose gold. You'll need some brushes. Among them, a two inch brush, a detail brush, a fan brush, and a few other brushes so that you can do some mixing. You'll need a water source like a sink, some paper towels, a plate or a palette, just something that you can hold your paints on. We're gonna start with a nice little winter landscape scene. Winter skies are a little bleak, so let's begin with a darker sky. We've mixed some gray, blue, and black. More black than blue. I'm using a two inch brush here. You're gonna thatch or swipe down a little sky. Skies are never an even color, so swatch the color on unevenly. Bob Ross, fun fact, used oil paints. Each episode, he used a technique called wet on wet. He paints over the entire canvas first, and then he paints start to finish on a wet canvas. This makes blending much, much easier. You'll see we're using acrylics here. So acrylics are a little harder to blend, and they dry much faster. So we'll be modifying his techniques just a little bit just to better accommodate our own materials. But as Bob Ross would say, we don't care. Mm -mm. We're just doing this for the joy of painting. So let's paint on. And if you're interested in my inspiration, it would be Bob Ross's Joy of Painting Season 31, Episode 12. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested to see what painting serves as the basis for our craft today. Now this winter sky is lovely, but it's a little cold, so we're going to add just a touch, not much, of this crimson to this white and make this sky blush just a little bit. Now this mixture looks really white on the palette, but it will show up as a pastel pink on the canvas, as you can see. That will be because our light source is directly above us. I think our sky is already looking a lot warmer, don't you? Try to blend it as best you can and push what you can of the sky into the pink. Remember, we're working with acrylics, so don't be too hard on yourself. These acrylics dry very fast. Wash that brush off in the sink and try to get a little bit more of that blue sky into the pink. To achieve this fade effect with my acrylics, which are drying really fast, I'm going to go ahead and use the blue that's already on my brush until it's barely left on the brush. And then I'm going to dip my dirty brush into the pastel pink. This mixing of the colors on the canvas is going to help me achieve that winter mist effect that I'm looking for. I'm going to go ahead and apply this color, this pastel pink, all the way down to the bottom of the canvas. And I'm going to try to get as much white filled in as possible. Add some of the whiter elements from your pastel pink to the tips of the pinker part of the mist to make some small mountaintops. Mountain ranges aren't very even either, so you can give them some variety. We'll do some friendly mountains in a few different sizes. The background is going to be all about peaks and valleys. That'll keep things interesting to look at as we continue to drag that pink mist down into the ground. Do your best to make it all fade together. And if you're interested in more Bob Ross materials, uh, you can always come to your local library in the Calcasieu Parish Public Library System. We have more than a few titles that feature Bob Ross. Everything from titles for adults on how to paint to children's stories. I think I'm channeling Bob Ross pretty well so far, don't you? I'm having a good time anyway. I hope you are too. And for those unaware, Bob Ross is actually really famous for his landscape paintings. So that's why we're doing a landscape so far. He was a very talented artist who was very open to teaching Americans how to paint on his public access show. He died in 1995, but he's recently experienced a revival in popularity thanks to the internet. 
Here's another fun fact. His trademark perm hairstyle was actually a cost-cutting measure. It wasn't a natural hairstyle. He actually had his hair permed often in the 80s so he could save money and let his hair grow without needing to style it and cut it. As he got more famous and money became less of a problem, he had to keep it because it was so associated with his brand. Now that we're winding down on the blending, it's time to wash our brush and move on to something that's really fun. So grab your fan brush because we're going to paint some happy little trees. I think happy little trees in this painting should be the same as the background base painting. This is a landscape, so we're taking a very wide view of these trees. That's why they won't be green. They will be just like the blue background. I'm gonna dip my brush into the same paint and do one straight line and then I'm going to feather up the leaves along the straight line that I've created to make a nice little tree. Oh look at that. I think he needs a little buddy next door. So let's go ahead and do another straight line and feather up the leaves on this tree using the same color again as that blue gray sky in the background. And this guy's going to be just a little bit taller than our buddy next door. What do you think so far? Yeah, I think so. Let's add a couple more here. We'll do one to the side. We're going to give this a very wintry forest feel. And we'll just feather up the same as we did to the others until we have a nice little grouping of trees. Sometimes I have so much fun painting I go a little overboard. I had to stop myself from adding a fourth tree here. I don't have that problem on the other side at all because we definitely need more trees if it's going to be a forest field. So I'm going to make this one kind of a granddaddy tree. We'll give this one, make this one really, really, really tall. He's had a lot of sun in his life. Let's give him a little buddy next door when we're finished with him. He'll be, I think, a little smaller. I think the granddaddy tree next door probably stole a little bit of his sunlight. So he'll he'll have room to grow later on. So we'll just make him right there next door. And let's add one more tree in there just to balance things out. And once we're done with this other tree in the background, I think we'll have a very nice forest feel. It's very wintry, very cold. I have a whippet. This is a little dog. It's kind of like a greyhound. And I don't think she would like this forest feel at all. I think she would be a little too cold. You know who else I think would be a little too cold is our little guest. This is our friend. Bob Ross always had his friends with him. Sometimes he would have little squirrels in his pockets. Um, do you think we should put him in the picture? I, I think we should. I think he'll be our guest. We'll give our landscape some, some attitude, don't you think? So are you ready to be brave? I think so. You know, earlier, I think I missed an opportunity. I should have said catitude instead of attitude. <laughs> All right. I've got a detail brush here, and I've got my black in a bowl. Uh, the black is in a bowl because it's a little bit soupy to put on the palette. So I'm going to use a lot of it. I'm using this detail brush here, and I'm just going to ever so gently paint a little silhouette outline of my cat. We're not committing to anything just yet. We can always go back and fix anything. And if it doesn't work, we can say they're rivers. There's really nothing you can do in painting that will ruin your painting. You're always just adding a little something more. All right. So as you can see, I'm just making my little outline here with my detail brush. I'm adding a little mouth and a nose about where I think it's going to go. Tufts of fur are going to be around where I think the mouth and cheekbones will be. I'm going to add some eyes and make sure my mouth is open, just like my little representative. Now this is an angry cat. As we all know, angry cats put their ears down really low. So my cat's head is going to be a little bigger now. We're going to push out with our brush as we go because he's going to be a, a scary little fuzzball. While we're painting him in, we need to remember where he starts and where he stops. So we're gonna kind of respect the outline that we've made a little bit. 
just enough. And we'll do a little bit of adjusting as we go. Wherever our paint takes us, that's where we'll go. Now it's true that nothing in life has a hard outline. That's only in cartoons. But I'm gonna go ahead and give this cat a hard outline. That'll make him stand out a little more and make him a little bit angrier. I think you'd be angry too if you were left outside in the cold winter forest like this cat was. Now that he's all filled in, I'm gonna go ahead and dip my detail brush into the rose gold after washing it, of course, and I'm gonna fill his nose in. His noses aren't really a solid diamond, so I'm going to modify that a little bit. Using the metallic rose gold, I'm gonna fill it in. Uh, I think this cat needs some defining gray features, so I washed my detail brush and again dipped it into the gray, and that way it'll give him a little bit more character. We're going to put in a little eye-popping vein in in a minute. You know, this cat has been through the year 2020, so he has been through quite a bit. And the gray just accentuates his life experience. Just a touch. And so while we make this cat very angry, I want to know in the comments below if, if you have decided to paint your pet or if you've decided to paint a stray cat like I have, uh, how your painting turned out. Okay, so wash that detail brush and dip it in the cherry red and go ahead and try to get your cat's red mouth in there. This is a very important piece. Your cat's very angry and he's going to be hissing. I've never seen a cat hiss without meaning it, unless he's playing, of course. So the cherry red mouth is, like I said, very important and it does kind of look like lipstick, doesn't it? <laughs> So let's move back on to the nose. We're going to fill in the areas of the nose where it's going to be a little more black. And we're going to adjust the cheeks just a little bit to accommodate the mouth. And while you're dipping in there in the black, we're going to go ahead and fill in some of the eye. So cats don't have much white in their eye. Most animals don't. Um, so we're going to go ahead and give him a real true cat eye. This cat has a yellow iris, so we're going to break out our bright yellow for once. And we're gonna go ahead and fill in a little bit of that eye with that bright, bright yellow. And now that's going to give him a very distinctive flare. Don't forget to leave him a little bit of an eye glint. Usually to have some life in the eye, we leave a little bit of white space in the iris. This is something that naturally occurs with all animals and people. Um, it gives you an idea of the direction they're looking in. So my cat's kind of looking off to the side. Accentuate those cat eyes with some extra gray. We're just going to thicken some existing lines and add details here and there. Uh, I did decide in the end that the cat's ear um, to the left should be visible. So I added and filled in that extra ear since my cat's face and direction kind of shifted as I filled the cat in. I don't know, I'm guilty of overpainting and over detailing, but it's so much fun to paint, so why stop when I'm supposed to? <laughs> Some people out there like to say that less is more, but I'm a big advocate of more is more, and more is better. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about teeth. So cats don't really go to the dentist, but there's still a very standard look that cat teeth have. The longest tooth in a cat's mouth is still the canine tooth. So make sure if you want a more realistic looking cat, that is their longest tooth. I went for a different kind of look. If you add teeth that are a little too long all the way across, you can enjoy a cartoonish, angrier effect on your cat. And that's really what I liked. <laughs> So enjoy painting those teeth any way you'd like, and don't forget the whiskers. Um, if you would like to do something different, you can always add the body of the cat, as I did in this second painting that I have holding up now. So if you enjoyed this Bob Ross inspired craft, then check back each week on our Facebook page or website for new content. Thanks for stopping by and see you next time.